You are listening to Comedy Club for Kids presents. Radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense. Is that it? Yeah, I think that's it. Hello? Oh, yep, yep, yep. Um, Hello and welcome to Radio Nonsense, the official comedy club for kids podcast that's suitable for all ages from... No, no, not that one. Uh... No, uh, this one? Snorkel. Oh, yes. Uh, two... No. Um... Oh, thank goodness for that. And everything in between. I'm Tiernan, and as you can probably tell, listeners... I'm having a tricky time this week as, well, um, all of Comedy Club for Kids HQ is invisible. Except me. Yes, everyone that's passing by seems to think I'm sitting in the air and shouting into nothing. It's very embarrassing. Oi, look at you there, all sitting in the air and shouting at nothing like a silly what's-it, ha-ha. Ugh, it is very tiresome. Yeah, I'm not really sure how it happened. I just sort of woke up and then there was absolutely nothing there anymore and everyone could just see me in my pyjamas and it was quite embarrassing. Absolutely everything here is invisible. I've got no idea how I'm going to make myself lunch or worse, go to the toilet. And everyone here apart from me is invisible too. I mean, the farting animals. Yeah, I have no idea where that came from or which animal did it. The stinky hippos, they're invisible, but I can smell them so I know they're here somewhere. Linda? Linda? Are you invisible, Linda? She might actually be here, but invisible, and I wouldn't know. And uh, Egbert, the male chucking robot, is also invisible, so I've no idea if he's got any of your letters. I'm right here. I still hate this job. Here's your stupid letters. But where are you, though, Egbert? I need to be ready for when you throw the... (laughs) Oh, right in my knee. That was not fair. But luckily, uh, this letter isn't invisible. I really wish I understood how this works. Um, But this has been sent in by Ben, aged eight, who reviewed the show on Apple Podcasts. And he said, thanks for mentioning me twice in Comedy Club for Myths. It meant the life to me and about a dozen stinky hippos. Well, Ben, um, you are very welcome. But firstly, I I don't want those stinky hippos. Please don't send them. They've now gone invisible. I don't know what's going on. Um, And I'm pleased it meant the life to you. But Comedy Club for Myths? This is Comedy Club for Kids. Have you emailed the wrong podcast? I haven't had anything to do with Comedy Club for Myths for quite a while, and frankly, I don't really want to, but, hmm, I wonder if that's why everything is invisible. No, I'm probably just being silly, aren't I? So, uh, listen, listeners, um, which I suppose is is what you do anyway, and uh, believe me, right now there's nothing to see here, so it is best to hear here. Hear here? Hear here. Uh, Yes, um, I would like to announce a brand new Radio Nonsense competition this week. Hang on, where is my trumpet? Uh, nope. Um, hang on one minute. Ooh, uh, no. Um, ah! This week's guest on the most important to spit, as you are going to hear in the minute, is the brilliant Stuart Heritage, who has recently released a very, very funny kids' book called The Odd Squad Rise of Invisidog. All about a dog with the power of invisibility, which, as it turns out, like I found out today, um, is quite rubbish by itself. Uh, you can't you can't really do a lot if no one can see you. It's brilliantly illustrated by Vincent Batignole, and um, it's very, very funny. It's very, very funny. So uh, if you would like a copy of this book, here at Comedy Club for Kids HQ, I have five copies to give away, if I can find them. Hopefully I can find them. All you have to do, though, is email me at podcast at comedy club for kids dot co dot UK with your idea for an absolutely rubbish superhero. What would be a completely useless power to have? Why wouldn't it help at all? The five that make me laugh the absolute most will win and I will get a copy of Rise of Invisi Dogs sent out to you. Um, Oh, and I'm very sorry, listeners all around the world and in space, but this is just for those of you in the UK and Ireland only. Uh, But if you're in the UK and Ireland, then do send in your rubbish superhero ideas before March the 6th and I will announce the winners on the episode after. 
And of course, if you want to send in any questions that you need answering or anything else at all, assuming the male person can find Comedy Club for Kids HQ by then, then please do ask your cranky skunk faces, sorry, I mean grown-ups, to help you email me at podcast at comedyclub4kids.co.uk. Or you can reply to any of the episodes on the Spotify Q&A too. I get all of those. And if those same grown-ups want to help support this show, they can sign you up to the advert-free Linda edition for a small monthly fee, and you'll also get each episode a day early too. Right, uh, now I just hope I can find the most important bit somewhere. Um, is that it? <coughs> no. Uh, this? Oh, this is so annoying. Is this the most important bit? He's invisible. This was the matter with him. I am very excited that today on Radio Nonsense, my guest is none other than Stuart Heritage, a.k.a. Stu Stu, arch nemesis of the kazoo, a.k.a. Stu Art Thou Harry Tooge, the secret mayor of Bruges, or as all of our geese listeners know you, ha, 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 ha. But of course, Stuart, you are most well known for your world record breaking attempt to simultaneously spin the most goats, for your campaign to remove interactive whiteboards from school classrooms and replace them with a wall of hummus, and most famously for creating the app Shout and Point for people who can't be bothered to learn a language but need help shouting and pointing loudly enough to get by. Um, Stuart, it's so lovely to have you on the show. How are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm a little disappointed. The hummus thing isn't working out as well as I wanted it to, I'll be honest. Um, oh, that's sad to hear. Why, why is that? Uh, it's uh, there's just a, a, a real hummus issue with schools these days. I don't know. Um, like when I was at school, we used a blackboard. We had a we had a blackboard and some chalk. And I think you know technology has moved on now. Yeah, chickpeas. Yep. I think chickpeas are the future. Um, yes, but it's really it's 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 hard to it's hard to um, convince the teachers that just that sticking your finger into a into a six inch. <laughs> pile of hummus and writing things out like that is is a way to go they think it's unhygienic i don't think it it's, is I, I see i think hummus is always of that i mean i suppose it depends on the consistency of hummus some hummus is runnier than you expect it to be some hummus is that right sort of thickness that were you to draw a picture in it that picture would stay where it was that's mainly the issue we've got uh, i have a supply problem very splattery hummus um ah. uh supplier um, it would just just gradually over the course of a day, the hummus would start on the wall and by the end of it, everyone would be sort of crawling around on the floor, digging around with their mm-hmm. fingers. It's I mean, you can still you can still do maths on the floor. Floor hummus is, is a perfectly valid educational. Absolutely. Model. And also, you know, I, I love the the idea you had because we're, we're with blackboards. You used to have a sort of chalk duster that would dust it off with, with whiteboards. It's just a fancy button that clears the screen. Ooh. But with your hummus wall, you were, you know, these kids were actively getting bits of bread and they yeah. were excited about cleaning the board because then it would mean they had a lovely slice of bread with hummus on it. Yeah, which is delicious. And, you know, it, it's, they're eating off surfaces that people have walked on. But I think that's <laughs> that that helps, if anything. That's very good for your yes. immune system. I I wholeheartedly agree. Would you? Can I ask? Did you come to Hummus straight away? Did you go through other condiments? Uh, oh no! I started. First? I started with mayonnaise, which was just a disaster. Disaster. Yes. Um, I was following. I was following the Norwegian model of uh, mayonnaise home school, and it didn't work. Uh, but then you know, I gradually I shifted through uh, mustard. Difficult wasabi. I, that's a wow yeah that, that was i mean number one they only come in tiny tiny tubes you need 50 or 60 boxes of wasabi <laughs> yes, per yes. system um and then it, it stings so it's, your teacher's crying the whole time yeah i can imagine the classroom smelt really pungent like that, wasabi's a really strong smell as well so their eyes must just been watering the whole class all the yeah, time yeah yeah it was if you were uh ofsted came once and it looked like they were just <laughs> telling them very sad telling the kids very very sad things so anyway yes. hummus is hummus is where i'm at now and the goats spinning goats is uh it raises awareness i think i think so and i also think that you know the goats seem to have a lot of fun um you know i think that people don't take that into account and i often i've seen you i've seen you spinning goats it's a remarkable sight you really do manage quite a lot of them um and the goats don't seem upset like i feel like you know when a goat's upset and they don't look upset Oh, you can tell. You can tell when a goat's upset. Um, I've just through through bitter experience, I've noticed that uh, mm. that their 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 bar. I'm gonna goat's bar, yes. right? Yeah. Oh, that's a good question, isn't it? Is it a bar or is it a a, a mark? I wasn't sure if it was a, a meh or a meh. 
Like, what's the difference between them and sheep? Like, there must be a something that makes you know that's a sheep, that's a goat. Technically, it's a mare. Um, but right. I, I feel that's if I, you know, I've been to to government um, um, conferences about this, and it's very difficult to look a, a politician in the eye and say mare. So I've, I've landed on yes. bar as a sort of an interim uh, stopgap. Yes. Anyway. Uh, so right. yeah, their their, their mare changes a lot. If when they when they get unhappy or dizzy, or or when they're about to vomit, which happens, you know, a lot in in, in yes, a nice yes. way, in a nice way, uh, because goats eat anything. So the stuff yes. that comes out of them is 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 amazing. I saw a whole shoe come out of a goat once that was spinning too hard. Wow, that is incredible. They do because they do eat. I mean, it's one of the things I think is like you can never call a goat fussy. You know, and I, I think that's a really admirable thing. Some some people, some some children, probably some listeners to this show I know are probably really fussy about all sorts of things. And, you know, and you, you were talking about your hummus wall earlier. I'm sure there's some kids that eh, don't like hummus, even though everyone knows it's brilliant. Goats, they're like, oh, what's for dinner? Oh, it's like a, a I don't know, a fence. I'll eat it. Great. Like, I'm happy. They don't care. Yeah, you know, they whatever don't care. Whatever it is that you put on the table. It's Anything. Incredible. Paper, uh, plastics, wire, just loads of wire. Like a big yeah. spaghetti. If you put two goats on the on the different ends of a long length of wire, they sort of lady in the tramp each other until they kiss in the middle. It's beautiful to watch. Wow, that is that's really lovely. That's really. I'm sad that's not being made into a film. One, one day, one day. I hope so. That's how we're we're going to get funding for the hummus. We're going to make uh, two goats <laughs> kissing a Do whole you... film, uh, just a whole film of two goats kissing, and it'll make wow. million dollars. And people say it's the most beautiful, romantic film. My worry is, because this is the thing, is goats do eat everything. My worry is that a goat would get to the end of that wire, there'd be another goat, and that goat would just carry on eating. And then they'd eat another goat. And then they'd probably eat another goat. And like, It's quite amazing there isn't just one giant goat that's eating all the other goats. Did you did you not see the news recently about the giant goat in Latin? <laughs> I did you not? I did not. And I I obviously missed a really big story, literally big. It was it was yeah, it was it was terrifying. It was it was the size of the capital city of Latvia. Uh, wow. Which I think wow. Riga, I can't remember. The goat ate it, basically, so it doesn't matter what, wow. the, what the name of it is anymore. But yeah, just one giant goat. It's run out of things to eat. It's it's just digging into the earth's core. It's horrible. And that's quite scary. We could all are we not all going to get consumed by this mega goat, the Uber goat? Well, I think the the plan is to um, set off lots of like just a million little goats. One million little goats would eat one giant goat, I think. Yeah, but then how do you stop the million little goats from eating everything? Like this, this is my, oh, that is, this you're feels right. like a never ending problem. I haven't thought this because straight. at some point goats are surely just going to eat everything. I mean, that's really sad, I guess. <laughs> but it's ultimately that's our fate as a, as, a, as a planet. We'll just be the goats. And then there'll just be a goat floating through space, eating planets and then the sun. Wow. And then the, all the galaxies. And we'll all live, we'll all still be alive. We'll just be in the middle of a, a giant goat's stomach. Yeah, until, until some massive space giant spins it and then it vomits us out into yeah. the cosmos of space. Which is you know, sad for us, but great for the intergalactic hummus wall uh, program. Yes. One, yes one, giant, one giant goat spinning in the middle of a universe is going to make so much hummus. <laughs> I, I think it's a beautiful idea. And I think it's, you know, people sort of wonder what's going to happen in, in years to come. With, with the, you know, at, at some point the sun will explode in six billion, trillion, million, zillion years or something. And then they wonder what's the future for for, for us and, and Earth. And, and it's that we'll be inside a massive space goat. And I think actually yeah. that's not the worst way that we that, for things to go. Exactly. My kids were very sad. When they were little, they said, how long is the Earth going to be around for? And I said, well, you know, one day the sun's going to explode. And they got very sad. And then I had to say, but wait, wait, wait. Long before then, a giant goat will eat you. And they were like, oh, great. Yeah. That's actually, that's quite cool. It's much cooler. It yeah. is much cooler. Yeah. I think as things go, it's a much nicer way to be. And, and, and yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good for the listeners to, le to learn about this. You know, it's, it's not something I think was talked about much by NASA or any of those astronomists. Uh, is it an astro is it astro astrology? Astronomists. No. Yeah. Astronomists. Not astrologers. Yeah. No, it's confusing because astrologers will talk about like the, 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 the fish goat in the sky or the, the bull or the other or the other fish you know the the star sign animals but astronomers mm. talk about the real space animals yeah 
Exactly. Which is different. The astrologers yeah. will tell you how the giant space goat in the sky affects your personality, whether it makes you happy. Yes, that's it. Yes. Egotistical. Astrologers will tell you that for definite, a giant goat will one day eat you and you'll float through space in its stomach. It's a very important difference. Yeah. Very important difference. Yeah. Yes. Yes, but it's nice to know how that space goat feels, depending on the month and 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 the week. And, it's and important, week. you know. It has feelings. It's, it's a it's a it's yes. a real yeah. It's a real living thing. It is, yeah. Or at least it will it will be it will be. And I, well, yeah, I, yeah. And again, Cur- I, currently, it's it's only the size of the capital city of Latvia. But at, yes, at the rate it's going, maybe you know, two two and a half years. Yeah. Would you spin it? Would you spin, would I spin it? I, 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 at its current size, I would spin it. Yes. Um, right. Sure. There comes a point where uh, just just the centrifugal force of the universe will take over, and it will it will become a self spinning goat. Wow! Wow! Just rotating and you're around out the of sun a job. until it eats the sun. Yeah, you're a bit worried about that because you know it is it is what you're known for, and as soon as goats start spinning themselves, wh- what are you going to do? I mean, I haven't actually thought of that. That's made me really sad. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm um, sorry. I mean, there are other animals, guinea pigs. Yes. They don't eat very much. I'm oh. a guinea pig. Easy peasy. Carry guinea, like 10 guinea pigs in my pocket if I wanted to. Yeah. It wouldn't be do as they impressive. Spin, do they spin well? They spin okay. You can right. you can kind of put them on their backs and they and like flick them and they do like a break dancey thing. Gently flick them. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I And they um, do it. The, yeah. That's that's fair. I I um I this this is um something that that my wife told me the other day. She saw someone complain on a website because they had bought they had been uh, they had bought a, a puppy dog, and they were told it was like a, a baby. Um, I think it was like a big uh, some type of big dog, and they bought the puppy, and they were complaining that this big puppy. This this pe- this puppy didn't do anything, and it just sort of sat around and munched and ate all their grass. And it wow. turned out they'd been sold a guinea pig. And they they had thought it was a, a puppy, and I think that's amazing that people had looked at a guinea pig and said, "One day this is going to grow into a big dog." Yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, in a way, it's good that it didn't, because yes. guinea, guinea pigs are nice. But if it if it had grown to the size of a dog, I'm, I'm not sure I, I could. What would you do? Yeah, with? can you take a guinea pig for know- a walk? No, they'd be very hard. But I, I sort of feel like a guinea pig would make a great like bus service. If they grew really big, I could sort of see a lot of people travelling on a big guinea pig to work. That would be nice, especially in the winter, because they're very furry. Yes. You, can tuck, you can tuck inside. Lovely. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I've really, I've wasted my life on this goat spinning thing. When I, what, the thing I should be aiming for is giant guinea pigs as public transport. Well, yeah, you say that, but by you spinning goats, you probably stopped a lot of them from eating Latvia. Um, they were too dizzy to get there. You make them very dizzy, yeah. In the direction of Latvia, got too dizzy and ended up somewhere else in the sea or something, and that's much harder to eat. It's very hard to eat the sea. Well, yeah, you have to start with the the, the, um, seaweed at the bottom, and that takes a while. There's more than you'd expect. Very chewy as well. Very chewy. Very chewy, but very good for you. Mm, They're very very happy goats, the goats at the bottom of the sea. (laughs) I bet they are. They're they're dizzy, but they're happy. Dizzy, dizzy, happy goats, which is uh, the name of my band, actually. It's, it's what are some of your songs? Um, <laughs> we've, we've got uh, I'm Going to Eat That Rock. Uh, that's, uh, that's a big, uh, oh, no, it's over there. Um, what's going on? That's another big hit. And uh, Ma or Ba, You Decide. That's, uh, that's Oh, that's um, a good one. That's, a, that's, yeah, that's an important it's one, big. isn't it? Yeah, it's very big. It's just me. It's me and four goats. That's the band. Yeah. Um, I don't really do. I don't really do much. I meant to sort of manage them, but it doesn't. Yeah, it's very hard because they're dizzy and, and yeah, they're just it's eating terrible, all the time. Terrible situation. Actually, it's, it's awful. I wish I hadn't got it. It's, I hate it. Um, and I don't like the music either. It's it's terrible. What sort of music is it? It's, it's sort of goat noise. Um, but one of them plays a tin tin drum, and uh, <laughs> and, uh, and one of them's on a clarinet, and the other oh. two are just sort of mang in in yeah. I'd say in harmony, but it's not quite really. Well, I, it's hard. It's hard to harmonise a goat. I actually, I, I was looking at my Spotify. They do this thing now where they um, just give you more of what you've been listening to, and I had a whole oh, yeah. goat noise playlist. Amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, because I've seen that video where goats, like they put goats in Taylor Swift songs, hmm. and they 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 can 
do that bit of Taylor Swift songs really, really well. And I think, well, that's it. They have got a future in the pop industry. Definitely. Yeah, I think so too. I think it, they're the future. They're the mm, future. They one future. day. Future is goats. Yeah, one day. You know, have you ever tried to explain a VHS to your children? And they don't understand what it is. Yes, it's very hard. I should. So for the listeners, this is going to be tricky, isn't it? For the listeners, it's like a box you had to put in a box. Yeah. And then you could watch a film. And it had a often film you on. had to rewind the film before you could watch it. It was, yeah, it was awful. Yeah. And one day, our kids will struggle to realise that there was a time before goat noise as music. Yeah. They'll, listen to, they'll listen to, you know, what we've got now, your Beyonce's and your Taylor Swift's, and they'll just think it's noise. Yes, that's true, isn't it? But it will all build them up to being inside the giant space goat when every day all they'll hear is that noise and they'll think, what beautiful music. They'll be very relaxed. We'll all be very goat relaxed. intestine. Yeah. 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 It's nice. It all, it's all got a greater purpose. It's nice, you know, it's, it's lovely. It's lovely speaking to an expert such as yourself, uh, Stuart, that can kind of put all these things into perspective. You know, it, it's useful to know that the future is going to be a goat. Uh, I was going to say great, but it's going to be goat. I suppose greatest right. of all time, isn't it? Yeah. Goat, that's what that stands for. So, yeah, it says a lot. It says a lot. Um, well, listen, you know, Stuart, I have to say, I, I'm thoroughly enjoying all this goat information, but I do, I've had a question that's been sent in by a listener that I know you are the man that can answer it. Um, before I ask it to you, though, I do have a couple of admin questions. Uh, how do you feel about admin? I love admin. It's my favourite. Good. It's your favourite? It's my favourite. That's good. Well, Name I, anything else. Uh, strawberry jam. Prefer admin. Wow. Yeah. Roller coasters. Prefer admin. This is quite remarkable. Wow, Peru. Um, do they do admin in Peru? Do you know what? I don't know, actually. If they don't, got... the answer is admin. If okay, they sure, do, sure. I can, the answer is both. Yeah, yeah. But only the admin in Peru. And only the like admin, the yeah. Or the, or the, yeah, the relics, yeah. I don't know what else they've got. I know they've got llamas and they've got relics, but I think... I think that's it, isn't it? An admin, I hope. An admin, I hope for yeah. their sake. I'll, we'll send it, we'll send someone out to find out after the show, and I'll, I'll, I'll report back. Thank you, yeah. I appreciate that. I'll Thank report you. back. Yeah. Um, well, listen. Here's 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 two bits of admin for you before we get to the main question. I hope I hope you're right with these two very important questions. Um, take your time on them; they're not mm-hmm. easy. Uh, question one um, is quite simply: What is this? Oh, I'm not going to tell you. Oh. Oh, wait, oh, wait. Isn't isn't what is this one of the name of your uh, goat noise songs? It is. It is. You're absolutely right. It is actually. It was, uh... The answer. The answer to your question is: What is this? Is uh, a chart-topping song by, and I've completely forgotten the name of the band. Um. That. That. Yes. Uh, they were called the Dizzy Happy Goats. The yeah. Dizzy Happy Goats. Yes. It's, it's my yes. favourite song by the Dizzy Happy Goats. Yes. Do you remember? Here's a little bit of trivia for you. Do you know which country it was number one in for um, exactly seventeen weeks? I don't actually know. Please tell me. Wow. Well, well, it was um, it was uh, the Czech Republic. Of course, that makes yeah. sense. Seventeen yeah. weeks is is a long time. That's that's uh, it's a long time. A season and a bit. Yeah, and it was Christmas, Christmas number one during that. Wow. And then continued to be the song for the new year, and into the spring. Um, at which point it was overtaken by a very beautiful whale song melody. The whales. It's always the whales. It's always the Wales. They had a lovely song about I'm too big to wear a hat. And it just, it, I don't know, it really touched, uh, really touched the people and, and that, that, that stormed through. So The goats of the yeah. sea in many ways, Wales. <laughs> they are absolutely the goats of the sea. That is, that is how we, we, we talk about them. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, th- I mean, you answered that very, uh, I thought that would be quite a trick question, but you obviously really know your goat music as, as, as we uh, established earlier. I'm very impressed. Thank you. So, Thank you. It was very good. Well, wow. okay. I don't. I don't think you're going to be able to answer this next question as quickly. I, I'm okay. going to say it's very hard. Um, I think it's a very hard question. Actually, I'm sorry that I have to. I have to ask it to you, but I hope you're okay with it. Um, Stuart, would you rather everything you touched turned into a really, really boring person called Greg, or that whenever you squeezed a tube of anything at all, all that you'd get was a small caterpillar crawling out of the end with a sign saying you've been pranked? Oh, okay. Let me think about this. Mm. The a tube of anything. I'm trying to just work out yeah. how many tubes I, I squeeze over the course. Of, always toothpaste. Yeah, always toothpaste. How do you get your tomato puree? Often because ours is often oh. in a tube. Yeah, 
I've I've been meaning to one day uh, get a, just a jar of tomato puree, but I'm still mm. stuck on I'm still stuck stuck on tube. Hey, it's in a tube. Why would you get a jar? But I mean, it's only really, it's only toothpaste and tomato paste. Is that it? What about um? There must be tubes of other things. Oh, do you know what? Like, um, if you if you get an ulcer, Bongella's in a tube. Oh, that's that was actually, yeah, your med- medical creams. Medical creams. So every time you'd be like, ah, I'm, I'm injured and I, I need this cream on my arm. And you'd squeeze it and a little caterpillar would come out. And, ah, you've been pranked. That would be. And that would not help. That would be incredibly annoying, wouldn't it? It'd be really annoying. The hospital, I mean, you know, <laughs> if you were in hospital, because it's, it's, only, it's only the tubes you'd have. But whatever the doctors were using or nurses were using on you, still when they squeezed the tube, it would be a small caterpillar. And I don't like caterpillars. I don't like caterpillars that much. Mm. Especially, the, you know, the sarcastic, cheeky ones who just live yes. to Frank. Um, They're known for but, it. They're known for it. And weirdly, that goes when they turn into a butterfly, which I think is, I don't know, they sort of mature and they become a kind of grown up as a butterfly, but. I mean, that's the you question. Don't get pranking butterflies. What if, what if we kept all our tubes for maybe six months and then we mm. squeeze them and a butterfly would come out? <laughs> well, that's, that's a very interesting prospect. I mean, I, I, it doesn't specify in the question, you see, so I don't know what would happen. I don't know how clever this caterpillar is or yeah. these series of caterpillars that are pranking if they'd have they've already planned for that my worry is getting a bus flight out of a tube be quite hard and so what yeah. you may have is a situation where you're really in need of medical cream and instead you've got a squished dead butterfly i don't want that i don't want that no. on my conscience but it's also not very nice would i prefer that to everything i touch turning into a very boring man named greg yeah i, mean, I touch a lot of things touch. i touch yes it's it's I mean that's that's tubes as well. Yes, tubes are a subset yes. of that. So if any tube I touch would turn into a boring man named Greg. But you see, you could you, you know if you if if you touch some things in and it turned to boring man named Greg, he is boring. But perhaps you could ask him to pick up a tube. It's probably the boring sort of thing he would do. Then he would squeeze it, and then it it, it would neither turn into Greg nor would a caterpillar come out of it. So like a very boring servant. An employee. I mean, I guess I'm only assuming that because he's boring, he would just do stuff because what else is he going to do? He's probably quite bored. That's really... So I could just touch one thing and it would turn into one man named Greg. And then I could be, hey, Greg, pour this cup of tea into my mouth. Nothing yes. he touches would turn into Greg. <laughs> yeah, he, but he would have to pour it because the problem is you then still couldn't touch... You'd forget that the problem is you'd be, you'd forget at some point, and just to go down the toothpaste now, you pick up your toothbrush, suddenly it's Greg. Yeah. You know, you, you would have the, this issue. I do hate to bring this up, but it's it's uh, I need to wiping your bottom. Yes, would be your your bum would turn into your bum Greg. would turn into Greg. The paper would be turning. Eventually, you'd just be wiping. It'd be just wiping Greg on Greg. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you'd be wiping Greg with Greg, which is. Awful, yeah. but perhaps not as. Actually, wiping a Greg with a Greg is probably not as disgusting as wiping your bum with a bit of toilet paper. You know, you're right. I've been doing it all my life. I've never realised how disgusting it is. I'm, I'm, I know a man called Greg. Uh, yeah, um, I'm just going to invite him round. We'll have a dry run. Yeah, and just see, see how it goes. Yeah, but you need to find another. You need to find another Greg. I'm going to get for Greg, who is my actual real life friend, and I'm going to get Greg from Master Chef. Oh yes, chapter. lovely Greg Wallace. Greg Wallace. He's very excited about everything. Yeah, I think, I think he, he should be the white her. Sure, white that makes sense. He would be very. Yes. Yeah, He'd be I'd very like to excited. rub Greg Wallace on my friend Greg. I wouldn't like to rub my friend Greg on Greg Wallace. No, I think that's a very yeah, it's very sensible. And Greg Davis, a uh, listeners might not know who that is. He's very big. He'd be very hard to wipe on anyone. Yeah, but and, unless you're, you you want to wipe something high up. But why would you probably high up? This is yes, but also you see, I have to say we've we've already gone wrong because I don't know your friend Greg. I assume he's your friend. He's probably not really boring. Greg Wallace is very excitable on the telly, so he's not you know boring. And Greg Davis isn't boring. We're we're talking about boring Gregs, which is a very different category of Greg. I don't know any boring Gregs, but um, they must exist. And they will exist every time I touch anything. Well, exactly. It's it's a big it's a big decision, Stuart. I can't make it for you. Okay. But you okay. know, we can't okay. proceed until you decide. I would rather tubes of caterpillars. Yeah. 
Okay. Because you think there's less, there's fewer tubes in your, yeah. 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 And I think eventually if every, every tube that anyone touches, a caterpillar pops out, we just, we'll just use less tubes that will come to a different, like pots maybe we'd use yes. instead of tubes. Or, um, I think so. Yeah. Or a bags, a bag of toothpaste. Yeah. I like the idea of a bag of, a bag of toothpaste. Yeah. 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 Why not? Yeah, maybe a sort of just a, a a brown a brown paper bag of toothpaste. I think would yeah. really nicely. I would love that. Yeah, yeah. Well, toothpaste it wrapped up in foil, and then when you undid it, you'd have to try and somehow scrape all the bits of toothpaste off all the wrinkly bits of foil. And brushing your teeth would take about four hours. Oh yeah, and you'd probably have to rub some of the foil against your teeth, which would <laughs> yeah, set off yeah. an electrical impulse in your brain. <laughs> wow, that'd be. Yeah, horrible. Yeah, was, I can't think of anything worse than that, really. In my, in my, yeah, it's actually the worst. But you know, hopefully, it wouldn't go down that route. I, you think you've made your decision, so that is what has to happen. And Thank I, you. I appreciate you, you, you analysing the question properly. Thank you very much. Uh, it's, um, it's very, it's very important. It's very important. And and now we can we can move on to the real the real reason that you're here. Obviously, um, this has been sent in from Anastasia, who says uh, she is the princess of poos. Now, I assume. I don't know if that's a, a, a small country. I don't know if there's a small island called Poos, or she is just the princess of all of every poo out there. Wow. Um, I don't know I'm what honest. her duties would be as a princess. Uh, just have to wave at Poos. Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, her mum is the poo queen. Her mum is the poo queen. Her dad is the poo king. Yeah. Um, she got any brothers? They're like poo princes and little poo, poo prince. princesses. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big role. It's wow. a big role because also a lot of princess. If if she is the princess of all poos ever, you know a lot of a lot of uh, royalty. They are just the royalty for the country. She is the she is of all poos. Yeah, doesn't matter. That's you can poo lot. in any country. Mm. That poo is officially a, yeah. a subject of Anastasia, Anastasia's mum. Yes, it's a big it's a big deal. It's a lot a lot of work. Yeah. Every creature as well. Every creature poos so. You're right. I didn't think of that. I was just, I, I was just thinking of human poos, but every everyone poos, everyone poos. So, she, I, I'm amazed she's had time to send this in. I'll be honest, because yeah. I feel like there's she's she's very busy. Um, do you think maybe she got she got a, a butler to do it or something, a poo butler? Is is that like emphasis on the butt, like the, a butler? Is that what they'd be called? Yes, if they're a, a poo butler. butler, a poo butler. Yeah, <laughs> that's because they... <laughs> yes, probably called Greg. Um, yes, very possibly, very possibly. Yeah, I mean, maybe while that butler was having a poo, he had time to send the send the message on his phone. Yeah, uh, I hope he washed his hands. Maybe oh, yeah, me too. It's disgusting. Yeah, I'm sure she's on the bit. Princess of Princess of Poos. I'd have thought that they, she's very much on the washing of hands. You'd have to be. Yeah. 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 Well, look, it's you know, it's lovely. It's not often we have royalty right into to radio nonsense. So thank you, Anastasia, for writing in. And she has asked this question, Stuart. And I, uh, this is um, this is an amazing question, actually, and it's something I hadn't really thought about, but it's very important. Um, she has said, and I'll read you this all in one go. Okay. What happens if you vacuum up your dog with a vacuum cleaner? Goodbye. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't know if the goodbye is from the dog as it's going, or if that's just from her. <laughs> As she finishes the question, um, but yeah, how how do you feel about that? Um, well, I mean, I actually have never tried to vacuum up a dog with a vacuum cleaner. Mm. I should try. Uh, I yeah, I mean, I'm one. I'm wondering if this is something that happens by accident. I, you know, I sort of hope that people aren't actively vacuuming up their their dogs or or, or sort of um, you know accidental guinea pigs, um, confused guinea pigs w with a vacuum cleaner. Um, I would hope that this is something that you you know sometimes this is something that grown ups do and, and listeners you're probably very aware of this that we, we try and sort of hoover the living room or something it's very boring but then you'll hear a dig 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 go down the vacuum it's a bit uh, of Lego, Lego it's a small piece of toys and then suddenly woof, 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 if the dog's gone yeah well I think it's I, an accident I, th I mean I think if you do that if if you prepare properly I think it's going to be completely fine you've got to hoover up a dog bed hmm. got to hoover up some dog treats. Yeah, hoover up a lead so it can take itself for a walk. Sure. Yeah, and I just uh, if you prepare the inside of the Hoover bag properly, I think a dog can have a very happy life inside a vacuum cleaner. Would you have to keep hoovering up dog food 
yes sort of quite often yes and uh uh you need to do something about all the poos i I'm, i hate to keep talking about poos so much because i, I no, no is, it's, it's important it's you know and, and, and also know. anastasia she'll be very pleased that, that we're, we're talking about a subject she understands yeah i think three times a day you have to set it to blow instead of suck and just blast, right. blast the poo out of your vacuum tube <laughs> Where would you, where would you aim the Hoover to do that? Because straight out the window, you can't straight out the window, right? Yeah. So Bam. unsuspecting passers-by. Yeah, ah, my eyes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they would know if you keep it to the right time. No one will walk past mm. your window. At, if you know, if you empty the poo out at let's say nine o'clock, midday, and three p.m., people would learn eventually to just wait, wait for the poo yes. to go. That's like their green flag. Is a is a full size dog poo just shooting out of a window? I like that you chose a three pm. That'd be the school. That'd be when a lot of schools finish it here in the UK. A lot of schools will be done by then. Yeah. That's a very dangerous time to be flinging dog poo out of a window. I mean, I, I, I do think children deserve it. Yes, in a way. Mm-hmm. I I agree. Yeah, I I don't like children, uh, mm-hmm. any of them, very much. Uh, Sometimes it's 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 it's, that you need to teach children a lesson, Mm -hmm. and that lesson is watch out for the high speed dog poos flying out my window three times a day. I think that's a very fair lesson. I I should I should warn you that some of the listeners to show are children, and not all of them. Some of them are four hundred year old wizards. Some of them are uh, indeed princesses of poos. Um, Some of them are potatoes, uh, as I've recently been informed. Um, some of them are ghosts, so you know. But there are some children that listen okay. to this, and and I hope that. But I hope they're not offended by what you're saying. I hope that they they listen to that and go, you know, maybe I do deserve a dog poo being fired out of a vacuum cleaner at my face. It's some. I when I was when I was young, my parents three times a day would at four hundred miles an hour shoot a dog poo out of a tube straight into my face, mm-hmm. and it turned yes. me into the man I am today. Very important. I'm a very, very serious important. man. And that's purely because uh, I had to just clean up turbo-powered poos out of my eyes and mouth three times a day yes. in my childhood. And I think I, I think children would benefit from that. I am very sad that because obviously when you got the hummus wall going, I know you proposed the the firing dog poos at everyone in the school as well, but it, they they didn't go for that, did they? They said it was one or the other, and really, I think I picked yes. the wrong one. I think so. I think so. And also, you know, think about how many kids are in a school. How many dog poos you'd have to get into vacuum? So you probably have to vacuum oh. up a lot of dogs. Yeah, it's 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 a lot of work, I think. And very yeah, expensive. you're right. You're right. I mean, that's another reason. You know, I, I might switch to guinea pigs at some point uh, because mm. guinea pigs just poo hundreds of times a day, hundreds, mm. and they're very small, so it's practice. Yes, and it's yes, less it's less quite... messy because a, a, a guinea pig, a four hundred mile an hour guinea pig poo would just bounce off of your face. It wouldn't. They wouldn't splatter. No, but I think it'd be quite painful. I think I feel like guinea pig poos would be quite painful getting guinea pig poos fired at your face. It depends, I guess, on the part of your face. I'd yes. take I'd definitely take a guinea pig poo to the cheek. To the forehead. Hey, the eyeball, absolutely not. So now it's up to training people who could aim vacuum cleaners correctly. You need people need to be trained in the art of firing a vacuum cleaner. Firing poo out of a vacuum cleaner at children. Yeah. Yeah. Expensive, yeah. It's expensive, but ultimately, I think if if we want to become the, the country, the sort of country that I think we're capable of becoming, it's, it's yes, it, it has to it has to happen. I agree. I agree. I, I think it's good. yeah, it's good. And and you know, and I, I suppose just sort of back to the question at hand. You, you know, you've you've basically sort of said it's far it's fine to vacuum. I think if anything, it's it's a great. It's what what the education system needs is what we've yeah. understood. Yeah. Um. You know, I I guess you probably have to make sure all hoovers are appropriate. Some hoovers are just for vacuuming up dog hair. I've seen those. They're just yeah. for dog hair. So, you know, if you hoover your dog with that, your dog will just be bald. That's true. And also you can get the, the, the bagless ones. I've got I've got like a Henry Hoover, which is quite short and it's mm. it's round and you can't see inside it. And I think that's the key thing. If I if I had a Dyson, which just has a plastic thing where you can see everything that you've hoovered up, then every time you got the hoover out, you'd have to look at a trapped dog. <laughs> Oh, the sadness that, in his eyes. Yeah, that would be yes. the sadness um, in his yeah, eyes. The sadness in his eyes. Yeah. Yes, that's true. That is true. Um, 
Yeah, I think that would be we, we've got we've got a bagless uh, vacuum that would be that would be very upsetting. I think, yeah, I think to have to. But then what, it might be very happy in there if you're sucking up the food, if you're you've sucked up the leash, you might just get to see this little dog running around inside a vacuum, jumping on all that, playing with all the bits of dust and other things that have spilt cereal or whatever else. It, that would be nice. it up. Yeah, it'd be like having a goldfish, go. but a dog. Yeah, yeah, but a dog. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's what dogfish are. Maybe that is what dogfish are. Mm. I'm, I'm going to look that up on Wikipedia. It's a very good idea. It's a very good idea. I'm going to. Well, you can do that while I'm looking up if there's admin in Peru, and uh, we can we can report back. Good. We'll we'll compare notes. So, yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, thank you, Stuart. I think I think you've answered that question very very fully, actually. And I, you know, I hope Anastasia is pleased with that. You never know. You may get a royal. Um, I, I don't know what you'd get a, a royal uh, sort of medal. Um, I don't. I, I don't know if I'd want a medal from a, a princess of poo. It's probably just a, a poo on a poo train, the, isn't it? that you pin to your. I'd, I'd still, t- Your Majesty, if you're listening, I uh, please pin some poo to my shirt. Wow, that's wow. Yeah, that's, you never know. You may become a knight of poo. The knight of poo. I would yeah. love that. Yeah. Sir Stew of poo. Sir Stew of poo. I can see that now. Beautiful. Yeah. It's wonderful. You can only hope. I, I'm sure. It's, I'm sure it's going to happen after this. You know. Th- well, th- thank you, listen, Stuart. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for um, your goat information. Thank you for answering Anastasia's question. Um, you've had some very difficult questions today. I really appreciate you answering all of them. Um, and listen, obviously, I know. I know you're coming up. Uh, you've you've got big conferences about the Wall of Hummus, but also uh, you have a, a fantastic book that is out all about uh, an invisible dog. Yes, it is actually about an invisible dog. Uh, uh, yeah, invisible dog. His name is he's a superhero, but you can't see him and he can only talk in woofs, which makes him a very useless animal superhero. With a, really, I, not, with a big heart. That's important. A bit invisible heart, I guess. Invisible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, haven't, I haven't got that bit in the book. I assume in the book that is not. But it, I, I have to say, listen, it is brilliant fun. And it's, it's made me really laugh so far. It's made my daughter really laugh. But um, I, yeah, I love that this dog is just invisible and that that's it. That's all he can do. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's. I don't think. I think when people choose what superhero they want, superpower they want, none of them should say invisibility, because it's yeah, it's very good. It's it's not a good yeah. one. Be strong, fly. You know, do the have stretchy arms, do laser and, eye and I, You know, and I think it's also after today you wouldn't know if you'd vacuumed him up. I mean, that's a big risk, isn't it? Mm. Be a, they'd be they'd just be like a noise, but you'd yeah. never be able to find out. Yeah. Yes, yes, it, it, yeah, it would be very, very dangerous. But I mean, luckily, that is not that is not in the book. Um, we've no, uh, Invisidog I, definitely I, doesn't get hoovered up in in Rise of Invisidog, my book. No, no, no. But it has got lots of fantastic characters. I think my favourite is Detective Octopus, who I thoroughly enjoy, um, and and Daniel, who listeners will just have to find out and, and read about. Um, and uh, it is beautifully. There's just beautiful pictures uh, all through it, and it is a very, very, very fun book indeed. And so, where can people get that from? Will they have it fired at them via a vacuum cleaner or? Yes, yeah, yeah, mainly vacuum cleaners or bookshops. Mm. Um, bookshops, yes. Also bookshops. Also Worth trying the vacuum cleaners first, though, because it's it's quicker. But go to a bookshop yes. and yeah, find it there. Or there's the in- internet. The internet. Yes, I've heard of that. Yep. Yeah, there's also the heard internet. It's good. Yeah, it's available it. everywhere. Ev- wow. Cool. I it's available check, everywhere. Uh, kitchen. I'll check our kitchen a bit later. And I'll Please do. It's. I mean, it's everywhere. Wow. Available to wow. purchase. You can't just take it. You have to. If you see. Oh, sure, sure, right. Okay. So if money. you see one on a wall or in a park, you can't just have, right. Okay. No, you have to send me send me an email and say, "Can I give you seven pounds ninety nine? And I'll say yes. Lovely. Yeah. And they just send it. Yeah, that's a, cool. That's fine. And all the children listening will have big credit cards and things. They can do that. That's yes. Fine. Yeah. Please. Please. Yeah, that's good. Please. Well, well listen, thank, thank you for coming on the show, Stuart. Thank you. Everyone listening should go and get Invisidog uh, immediately. Uh, and also, um, you know, be very careful with their vacuum cleaners, I, I suppose. They're the two main two main lessons, I think, from, from this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Buy my book and be careful around poo vacuum cleaners. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you. I'm the Invisible Man. I'm the Invisible Man. 
Thanks so much to Stuart for taking time out of his goat spinning to answer the question from Anastasia, Princess of Poos. Um, thank you for your very, very good and very royal question. Uh, Anastasia, I do hope you liked your answer. And if not, please write any complaints you may have on your dog and then vacuum it up so I never have to see them. Thanks. As I mentioned earlier, Stuart is the author of the very, very funny kids' book, The Odd Squad, Rise of Invisidog, which is available in all the places that books uh, lurk right now. Um, or you can send in your idea of a rubbish superhero to me um, with help from a grown-up at podcast at comedyclub4kids.co.uk and the five funniest ideas will win a copy of Rise of Invisidog. I will get that sent out to you. Though please remember, it is UK and Ireland entries only. So I'm very sorry, listeners, in Saturn or in the centre of the Earth, uh, but you can't enter. If you have a question you'd like to have answered or you want to send in anything else at all for Egbert the male throwing robot to chuck in my face, then please get your cranky skunk faces, sorry, I mean grown-ups, to help you email me at podcast at comedyclub4kids.co.uk or you can reply to any of the episodes on the Spotify Q&A. If your grown-ups would like to help support this show, they can sign you up to the advert-free Linda edition for a small monthly fee and you'll also get each episode a day early too. And do check out all of our live shows and merch at comedyclubforkids.co.uk. Oh no, where is the phone? Uh, is that it? No, that is, that is definitely not it. That is a goat. Oh, and now the answer phone's kicked in. Great. Oi, you human bum-faced stupid nose. This is Ralph the Pixie over at Comedy Club for Myths. If your listeners keep sending us mail instead of sending it to you so our annoying mythical mail-throwing kraken keeps chucking them in our faces, well, next time, I'll make your HQ invisible forever. It should be wearing off now, but heed my warning, or next time the curse will be much, much worse. <laughs> oh, it really hurts my throat laughing like... <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it. I'm going to go and hide under a mushroom now. By the way, please come and visit again soon. Bye. Oh, well, that explains it. And I guess the invisibility should be wearing off roundabout. Now, hang on. Where is everything? Oh, no. I'm somehow sitting outside. I've been outside all this time. And Comedy Club for Kids HQ is a good five minute walk that way. No, oh, this is really annoying. Oi, look at you all sitting outside and shouting at things like a silly what's it. Ha-ha. <laughs> but this doesn't make sense. If, if Comedy Club Kids HQ is five minutes that way and I've been sitting outside this whole time, what on earth did I record the show on then? <laughs> a winged Pegasus? But that's a mythical creature. And that means everyone will just have to imagine listening to this and then they might write in and that's going to go directly to the Comedy Club for Myths and I'm going to get in all sorts of trouble. <laughs> right, that's it. You asked for this. No, bye. You have been listening to Comedy Club for Kids Presents. Radio Nonsense, Radio Nonsense, Radio Nonsense, Radio Nonsense, Radio Nonsense. It's the end.